Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 197 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with Damon. Damon's back for the first time in a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. I've done I've done a lot of driving. A lot, a lot of, of driving. driving. A lot of miles on the car. A lot of miles. Absolutely. We, we, we also have, since Trevor is out, we have the special guest of, of my wife, Karen, has is joining us on the show. Hey, everyone. So excited to be here. <laughs> she's done so she's it's funny damon because she's done podcasts with me before but we've done another podcast together not our podcast <laughs> you're moonlighting on another podcast nice I can well we were that. guests on another podcast so yeah oh, okay. Tw- twice actually we did it two other times yeah, two so. times yeah so i think she's a little offended that she's never been invited on this show so <laughs> well, it's kind of true i understand that yeah yeah <laughs> so so did you did you miss us, Damon? Did you miss did you miss the show? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I've been so exhausted. So like I've been driving to soccer games, then taking pictures, and then like spending hours editing pictures to get up the next morning to go to a soccer game to do the same thing. And then I was in I don't forget, like, was I in Virginia Beach before I left? I don't even remember. I've been at swim meets. My daughter's playing a lot of tennis. I, I think it's the taking pictures and driving, but like we were going to like, I would get up on a Saturday morning, drive two hours, 45 minutes, watch a game for two hours, come home two hours, 45 minutes and get up the next day and do the same thing. So it was, it was a lot of driving and then editing pictures. Like if you don't edit pictures, you have no idea like the amount of work that goes into that. So like even tonight, I mean, she had two tennis, one, two, she played tennis, she had two matches today and I have like a thousand pictures. Like, so oh, wow. yeah, it's a lot of work, but I'm trying to think about what else I've done. So, I mean, I went to Woods of Terror. I mean, it was, it was fine. We went with the regular crew. So my wife ended up driving us there. Cause I don't know, as I get older, like did my, this night blindness nonsense. Like I don't like driving at night, especially like places where I know there's going to be a lot of people like walking around and things like that. So we went to Woods of Terror. My wife drove us. She just kind of hung out. Um, based on the last time she went, she was not going in. It was okay. Um, I'm a little over it. I'm a little over like, and I, and I loved it the first, you know, time or two, but it's just not that it's the same, but it's the same. You kind of know what I mean? Like, yeah, they didn't change anything this year. Like that's something that Karen would love. So there was a new house, which was kind of cool. It was like a psychiatric ward hospital-y sort of house. But I think with COVID things have kind of been um, like a lot of things just don't happen you know, like the masks over your head during purge, like that doesn't happen. I mean, things were mostly back to normal, but it was okay. I think that maybe next year after Halloween, they have it where you can go through with just a glow stick, no lights on anywhere. And I think maybe I would do that after Halloween instead of going during Halloween. So, and we have that, we have our trip to Dollywood coming up uh, December and, you know, December right before Christmas think we're gonna make our plans for our june trip to disney i think this month we're gonna make our plans because i think we are in the window now that we can use all our points to make that trip right so nice yeah yeah yeah, i think we'll do that also and i mean that's about it really yeah it sounds like you've been busy though i mean that's you know yeah definitely busy i mean missing doing the podcast i mean i don't know about that but i mean definitely busy (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad you missed us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not doing the podcast. I was saying, did you miss Trevor and I? Is <laughs> I mean, I guess we still talk. I mean, we, we talk to each yeah. other. I was, I was thinking about that recently because, again, something that I'm not going to talk about until it's physically here at my house. Um, you know, I realized, like, I don't have anyone to talk to about certain things. And I think that's been the nice part of the podcast. Like, not that it hasn't dawned on me before, but, you know, it kind of was first and foremost. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. No one in my family is going to care. Well, the person that would care, I can't tell. Yeah, you can't yep. tell. The person. So I can't tell. So it's okay. So no one else in the family is going to care. None of my friends are even going to know what the heck I'm talking about or even remotely care. So I was like, oh, but I can talk to Tom and Trevor. So I, I think that that was that was the nice part, um, you know, for me. Even though, again, I haven't been yeah. on the podcast. 
I also I do want to mention we just got a message literally while we're recording this that Trevor has made it safely. So he he made it. He's at his resort. He got his room. He's he's hanging out in uh, at the Poly. So I'm sure we'll you know see some things from him uh, in the Facebook group over over the next uh, week or so here while he's while he's there. So see if you can go find him. But um, or, or know, maybe not. Right? Or maybe not. Listen. Well, so listen. I, it's funny. I didn't address this, but. You know, I didn't really post anything while we were there, uh, and I'm sure some people noticed. Like, wait, tons of Disney and not posting anything. And and truth be told, like, number one, I'm really bad, and Karen can attest to this. I'm bad at taking pictures. I'm just I forget. Yes, and you know, does. yeah, I just kind of like to live live the moments. I just am bad at taking pictures. I just don't think about it. You know. Yeah. So, well, but then also with such a young kid too. Yeah, exactly. The most of my attention was was to our daughter, right? So I just wasn't I mean, I was more concerned about taking pictures of her with characters and that kind of stuff than actually, you know, taking pictures I, of things. I would like agree. I, I think that for me, as since my kids are older and they find it a- amusing um to meet people that listen to the podcast. You know, they talk about the podcast at school, like, but they talk about it in like not in a bad way, but in like a, you know, humorous way. Like, oh, yeah, your dad yeah. does a podcast sort of thing. So I think for me, because the kids are a little bit older, it's a little bit easier to connect yeah. with people um, than, I mean, and we honestly, I don't take pictures of Disney unless it's like, you know, with my phone anymore. And then it's of my family. So I don't take pictures just of Disney. I mean, our friend that goes, you know, takes pictures of Disney. And then if I really wanted pictures of Disney, I'd just ask Charles, right? At the end of the day. Yeah. So I, I don't do a lot of picture taking that I would necessarily post either. Yeah, I mean, it's we just, you know, Karen and I were focused on wrangling a four and a half year old, right? So, yeah. <laughs> like, that was I that was think, our main focus. So, like, we we're just like, ah, we're not going to, I'm not going to post anything. Like, I think you know. for the next trip, though, I think I'm going to try to do a non park trip. So, that will be a little bit different and interesting. And it may, you know, afford us a little bit more time, but we're going to wrap it up in a universal trip, I feel like, as well. Okay. So, yeah. I think we're, we're going to end up doing a two days at Universal. And then just kind of chilling at Disney. The only thing that's really like kind of annoyed me a little bit is like, I want to go to Epcot just to eat, not for anything else. And that's where it's really hard. Yeah. Like I don't want to spend, you know, $750 just to go spend $300. (laughs) Another couple hundred dollars. Right. Just to go to food and wine. So that's where it becomes tough. Like for a day, you're really talking about a thousand dollars for my family. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And it's just not worth that. Yeah, I mean, no. I like it, but it's not worth that. No, I get that. I get that. It's tough for just wanting to go to food and wine, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the only thing that we would consider doing is maybe buying tickets just to Magic Kingdom because we did not really Magic Kingdom. Um, and then, you know, would we want to do Tron? I, again, I'm not really all that souped up about Tron because it exists again. And I, I, again, the the more that I see the same rides being propagated to different parks is just more annoying to me. So I, I don't know if I'm all in on that anyway. I mean, I think the ride will be fine and I think it will be fun. It's more of a me type of ride yeah. and our family type ride. So I like that. But, you know, if you're telling me I'm going to go on Velociraptor or Velocisaurus, whatever that one is, at Universal, yeah. yeah, two days before, do I really need to go on Tron? Not really. It's, I mean, it's different, but you know, yeah, I get what you're well, saying. Well, okay, so I take Hagrid's. I mean, it's not much different than Hagrid's, I mean, except we're talking about a different theme, right? The the sort of the ride itself, uh, motorcycly sort of feel. So I, yeah, I don't well, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know I if I need to do that, but we'll yeah, see. I understand. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, do you want to start we get doing some questions? It's been a while. Yeah, get- sure. So, all right. So the first one is from Kristen. <laughs> this one's more directed towards Thomas. Tom's ego grown over the years due to the podcast. This is this is, he- my, this is to my wife. This is this. <laughs> yeah, this is really for, for for you, Karen. So, does he talk about Disney around the house? And then, what is your favorite park restaurant ride at Disney? As a first time mom, what were some of the biggest worries and biggest joys of taking your daughter to Disney for the first time? That was a long question. Um, (laughs) It's it's a lot of questions in one, yeah. (laughs) So uh, starting with the first one, I don't think his ego has grown. Um, He's Because it was already really big. It's a a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) You're not, not, uh, you know, curing world, you know, hungry. Exactly. Exactly. And honestly, I think sometimes it feels weird to him that people actually want to listen to him. So um, I don't think his ego has gotten bigger. Um, I 
personally don't think he's talked any less for the most part about Disney. I, well, actually, I will give you a little bit of credit. You used to talk my ear off all the time. Now it's maybe like 50% of the time. So, so it's 50% but he has, less. He has an avenue now. He's got yeah. an avenue. For yes. Yeah. Yes. And I'm very grateful for you and Trevor for that. <laughs> because honestly, we would have numerous conversations at times like, listen, I love Disney. I love going. I love everything like movies, everything that Disney has to offer. I really want to work there someday when I get older, <laughs> when I grow up. Um, but at the same time, that's not my sole focus. So him having this outlet has been fantastic. Um, <laughs> that was the purpose of it, that. right? That's why I started in the first place is because you yes. were tired of hearing me talk about this stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my favorite park ride restaurant. So first of all, my favorite park, I would definitely say would be Magic Kingdom for me. I just, especially now with my daughter, I absolutely love, and I, and Tom, I'm sure you can attest to this. I just love yes, seeing yeah. her face light up as soon as she sees the castle and we call it Mickey's house. Um, I don't know how that actually started, but it works. I think I started um, that just cause, like, <laughs> yeah. You know. But it's funny because remember we we were calling Disney World Mickey's house and then we got there and we said we're at Disney and she goes what Disney and like she was very confused by it and but then she <laughs> well, started calling it Disney yeah so it was just yeah anyway <laughs> I I do love though just like the ambiance of Magic Kingdom it's just yeah. it it makes me so happy um, restaurant I would have to say would be La Cellier um, I never get steak at home um, Tom does not eat red meat so being able to go to a really nice steakhouse and be at Disney at the same time on point um, and my favorite ride I'm not gonna lie I was so amazed by the Guardians of the Galaxy ride that was just something that I had never <sighs> I know, I know. I hear the sigh already. Um, to be fair, though, I am not as much of a guru of amusement parks as you are, Damon. Um, but it just was such a cool atmosphere for me. And having to go on it by myself, I actually really got to take it in a little bit more than I think if I had family there, you know, just chit chatting and whatnot. So I, I really loved that. Yeah. But sorry, Damon, I know no, you that's disagree. okay because I found a post today about people were talking about guardians and felt exactly the same way I did. And I was like, I've, I, I'm, I'm happy. Like it, it's not just me, like it's other people too. Well, and I, I pretty much you, everybody in your group enjoyed it. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it was nice to find somebody, you know, another, and it was a thread. It was a thread with like, you know, 900 people, you know, kind of chiming in. And I would say that 80 to 90% on this specific thread were kind of like, yeah, it's space mountain. Yeah. So what? Like, yeah, it's that like, and that's kind of like my feeling with it. So I, I was happy that other people out there kind of feel the same way. But I, I think a little bit of it is, you know, depending on how many parks you go to. You yes, know, I would agree. I, I didn't, you know, again, when you think about it, you know, growing up in New Jersey, right, we had Great Adventure. It was a big yep. deal park. Like, that's a big deal ride park. used to go park. there all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big deal ride park. And then, you know, we've been to, you know, a lot of other parks, so. I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree. I think the the thing that kind of got to me was the actual uh the ride the actual uh coaster. I can't even I can't even speak uh, about like it. how smooth it was and like Yeah, how oh, smooth so it was boring. and how it kind of turned and you know, the actual cars themselves. I thought that was so really cool. Boring. They play you know really loud music to take your mind off on how boring it is. <laughs> no, that's not, no, the music yeah. is, is from the movie, It's David. part it's of the like, movie. No, no, I understand yeah. that, but they play it really loud so you don't get bored with how no, boring the actual just, coaster is. It's well, literally just the movie, yeah. Like, I will say this, though. Marrying Tom has gotten me away from more of the hardcore roller coasters. I used to go all the time. Like, we went to Cedar Point. We went to Dorney, Hershey, like, all of these yeah, different Dorney. parks. And – I love roller coasters, but now I've been kind of taking it a little bit of a backseat, even going to like Carowinds and whatnot. And so I appreciate it more. I'm not just going for the thrill of it as much anymore. So I think that's why I enjoyed it. I mean, I last time we went to Carowinds, you went on like everything. So Oh, yeah, I did go on Fury. That was pretty fantastic. <laughs> I did enjoy that one. There's um, one more question there, too. Is it your first time mom question. So first time mom. So this was not our first time taking our daughter. Um, we had taken her, I think, two times before. Right, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Two times. Um, and, you know, it was obviously a very different experience than when she was a year, year and a half old. Um, she was actually able to 
you know, see a lot. Um, I think Tom talked about this before, but one of the things that I noticed, especially being a former special ed teacher, is I saw how overwhelmed Autumn was um, when we were doing things and how it kind of made her, you know, very timid at first. And then as we went through the trip, it started getting, you know, a little bit easier for her. And so I think for me, the hardest part was seeing her kind of anxious um, as somebody that is also very anxious, seeing her kind of like crawl back into her skin a little bit, but then being able to see her go up to those characters and kind of get out of her shell again was absolutely the most amazing thing. I think Tom and I can both agree that her face lighting up seeing those characters. And we were scared because we had no idea how she was going to react yeah. to seeing characters. Cause it's one thing seeing them on TV, you know, but she also has a fear of movies for some reason um, that we're trying really hard to get rid of. Um, but so I really wasn't sure, especially with face characters, um, how she would feel about it, but that was definitely her favorite part. If we could have just spent time going to see all the characters and then maybe riding the Triceratops spin um a million times and she would have been content <laughs> yeah no that's that's true i agree yeah. but now what happens that it's not there anymore like does, like did you have to explain well, that to her well well the the whole aladdin like it's, any of those spinny rides i think would be okay. will be good yeah, yeah for her yeah she likes the spinny rides yeah. Like even tonight we went to a little carnival and she saw some of the spinning rides, which the swings look terrifying to me tonight. Not oh, I don't do carnivals tonight. anymore. Uh, <laughs> but the merry-go-round she was obsessed with. So uh, anything that spins like that, I think she'll be fine and content with. Yep. I agree. I agree. Okay. I'm going to read all the questions today. How you want to read all the questions? I'm I'm read all the you questions read them. That's fine. All right. This is from Dan. Uh, Okay. Would you rather be on this podcast? And this is to you again, Karen. Would you rather be on this podcast with your husband or at Disney World with Trevor and his family? Uh, and you should think about this before you answer. <laughs> I feel like. I'm going to add she, that. She doesn't even have to think about it. She's got an answer. <laughs> I mean, okay. So if we take out the whole Trevor and his family, no offense, Trevor, I do want to meet you and your wife and your son. However, <laughs> um, if it were just going to Disney, no offense, honey. I, I would definitely no, be choosing. I, I don't together. take offense to that. No, I, I don't. I, I am, it's it's interesting. So I'm talking to some of my friends that are going on, you know, their honeymoon, second marriage sort of thing, and you know, people going here and going there. I have not gone on vacation without my kids since you know my oldest is 18. We just don't do that. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like I would never want to do that. Yeah, this is me though, man. I'm, that's just not my jam. Like if I'm going, let's yeah. let's take the family. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I get it. I, I mean, I you well, know, people I, look at me weird because they're like, well, what about going to the islands? Like, well, no, I, you know, listen, when my kids are old enough that they have their own family, I can do all that stuff because then they'll be doing their own thing. But for now, nah. Yeah. You want to spend as much time with them as you can. That's such a good dad right there. Yeah, <laughs> all right. You want to do, Be- do Becky's question? Yep, sure. Now I'm gonna do them all. All right. So Tom's wife and, and unfortunately my wife is is not here. So again, we we were at tennis for <sighs> Eight, so let's see, nine, Damon's, 10, Damon's 11, tired. 12, one, two, yeah. three, four, five. <laughs> so nine hours, um, they had two, uh, f- they're playing in a tournament, a team tournament, and, you know, they, they you continue to play if you win. So they played two different teams today, and just my wife is exhausted, and I was exhausted. And they, she's downstairs playing, I think, did I say blank slate, I think, with yeah. the kids and, and, and my parents. So I didn't even ask her because she was down there playing blank slate. But anyway. To Tom's wife, my not my wife here, but I can answer for her. Are you now or were you previously the main Disney planner in your family, or is it a combination of both you and your husband who plan when you stay eat and what attractions to experience or skip, or is it uh, necess- is it necessity based because of kids, you know, Peppa Pig land? Just wondering if the constant information gathering needed for this podcast makes Tom Damon more in planning mode or detached from it. I, I can tell you I've never been part of the planning. I don't ever call to make any appointment for any hotel any vacation ever. My wife plans all of that. (laughs) She is just better at it. She does it more because she used to travel a lot for work. It's just, she plans everything. Now, when it comes to our Disney stays, when we were going with our friends, they would plan all of the places we ate and stayed and all that. And my friend, we would call him, um, what was it? Julie from the love boat. She was the coordination planner, right? On love boat. I don't remember. <laughs> oh gosh, Tom. 
Tom, that's that's hurtful. I can't help. Might you. have been before your time a little bit, though. Love boat. A little bit. It was a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Little but bit. anyway, um, he would plan everything for us. So no, I don't plan anything. I I do come up with. I would say like the plan of like, Hey, we're going to go to universal for two days. And then we're going to go to Disney for three days after, which is what our June trip is going to look like. But then, then I'm out. Like, I don't do anything else and say, you know, you stay where you want to stay. We make, you know, wherever you eat, we want to eat, but we don't really make plans like that anymore. Since the kids are older, we just kind of go and do, and it is what it is. And if something we don't get to because we didn't plan it, don't really care. (laughs) That makes sense. Yeah. Well, Karen, do you want to answer this? I mean, I... yeah. Um, if I had, Wait, it can I guess way... first? Yeah, go ahead. I would say Tom does all the planning. <laughs> ding, ding, ding! You are correct. Um, and I mean, I, I would it... say all of. It. I mean, I think I come well, up with the basic structure of it, and and I ask you like for your opinions on things. Well, let right? me explain. Um, if I had it my way, I would have him literally plan everything. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there there are times where it's like okay. I just want to go. I don't really want to have to have the stress of figuring out where we're going to eat. And so I would much prefer him just picking everything. But I do appreciate, let me say that, that you do ask me and you do, you know, consult with me. But I also, you know, when we went for my birthday, I was like, please just don't tell me anything. Like, I just, I like that, you know, surprise feeling. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. want to have, you know. Yeah. It was a little different for, the, for this last trip, though, since we had family yeah. coming with us and your family was coming, you know, and it's we we just I wanted to make sure we were on the same page. But I mean, the Peppa Pig thing was actually me because um, <laughs> you made a mistake, really, yeah, is what you yeah. did. Yeah. So I after I was with my daughter when she saw the video of the existence of this park. And then I said to my wife, I was like, I think we need to do it. I said my wife, like, you're not here. Um, I said, but yeah, so I said to Karen, I was like, I think, I think we need to go now because she saw this and she knows it exists and she wants to do it. So my friends just did the same thing last week. The Literally the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, well, we were going, to, I think they went to Universal though. They were going to Universal and Legoland and they're like, ah, oh, you know, the kids love Peppa Pig. We're going to go. Hey, she had a blast. Like she, she rode her it, first yeah. roller coaster four times. I think she. Yeah, loved I think we it. went on four times. Yeah, my knees were in my chin, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it, it was it's not exactly a roller coaster made for adults, but it was. Uh, I mean, you know, we rode it four times, and I did get like sprayed directly in the face with water on that thing, too, which I also <laughs> I forgot did not about appreciate. That. Yeah, I don't know what that was about, but what did, David? Did they say anything about it or? No, like, no, no okay. there was no discussion about it. <laughs> just a matter of factly. Just matter of factly, I went to Peppa Pig Land. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. All right. So let's see. So Sean is next. Has the thought of moving to Orlando or Florida in general ever crossed your minds? If you did move, would you keep your DVC points? No, I definitely would never move to Florida. That's just it would never happen. And I don't think my wife would ever move to Florida either. She said that a million times. I think it would ruin Disney for me. It would ruin Universal. It would ruin all the places that we like to travel if we, you know, ended up living there. So I don't think that would happen. I mean, but again, if I was forced to move because I got a house, I won the lottery right tonight. What is it like one bazillion dollars? Yeah, it's okay. And I moved to Golden Oaks. Then yeah, I guess I would. And if I moved to Golden Oaks, I wouldn't need my DVC points. Well, yeah, I, I think that's you know, yeah, I, I we. It's funny because. I've always said I would never move to Florida, right? Because for a lot of reasons, like, first of all, it's just too hot there. Like, but I, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't want to live in Florida. Um, but to your point, Damon, I, I don't know if it would ruin Disney for me or not. Like, cause I would still enjoy, I would enjoy going more often and enjoy like finding times when it wasn't busy, like, you know, and, which, you know, there are few and far between, but they still exist. And like, you know, going, like we used to go, you know, great adventure. The big thing, if we were just not doing something one day and it like rained in the morning, we'd always go to just like pop into great adventure later that day. Cause there would be no line. They should right? do that like, for action park. For action park too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, Cause if it rained, people just wouldn't go. And then if it, you know, cleared up in the rest of the day. Wow. So like I would do that kind of stuff at Disney if I were close by, you know, but what were we going to say? Damn, that, would ruin, that, would, that would ruin Disney for me. I feel like though. Yeah, I mean, it might. I don't know. Uh, but I, it's funny because after this last trip, when we got back, I said to Karen, I was like, this was the first time that we left and I could see us moving there and living closer and, uh, and, and you know, tr- you know, trying to have an annual pass and go more often and stuff like that. But I mean, I, it's it's not something like we're actively trying to do. I could just see it more than I could in the past, you know? <laughs> 
So I don't know, Karen. But like with your daughter in college or prior to that? I, I don't know. Prior to that, maybe. I don't know. I, I would have a hard time living in Florida. I'm telling you right now. I, I Florida is a, a place I don't love in general. Cause just for, just cause the heat, I don't like heat. Like I'm just, I can't, I can, you know, it's hard enough here. It during was hot summer today though, man. Not yeah. It was 80 today. degrees here today. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, even that I was like, Oh, I mean, it was only like 85 when we were at Disney too. And my, you know, it was, it was rough, man. I, I, and it's just that like that all the time there, you know? So anyway, Karen, go ahead. What were you going to say? I think the only way that you and I would actually move is if you and I got our dream job at Disney, which, you know, I think that we both secretly kind of hope at some point that could happen. However, with that being said, I would think Damon, it would probably be closer to when she was older um, and can make those kind of decisions. One of the things I, this might be a little taboo to say, but I absolutely love Disney, but I also really want to travel some other places too. And the past few years, we've really just gone to Disney. So if we had it right in our backyard and being able to go whenever we wanted, I could actually see us going on other vacations, which would be a very big Uh perk. Uh Um, (laughs) This sounds like something, everybody. I don't know. (laughs) What do you you mean? (laughs) (laughs) This this sounds like something. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love everything that Disney has to offer. However, seeing my daughter in the little sand pit at Peppa Pig land, trying to make a sandcastle, I want to go to the beach. Like I want to go spend some time in some other places too. (laughs) Yeah. Unfortunately, I hate the beach, but we we, we won't make the beach happen. I told you. I much. hate the beach too, but that's why I like Hilton Head. But Hilton Head is now yes. Hilton Head is bad now. Anyway, I mean, is it really? It, it's just, just not the way it used to be. I was looking yeah. again uh, as yeah. part of that project that I was doing, where I was moving all my pictures to you know the cloud. I've been looking at pictures of Hilton Head from like even seven years ago. I say seven years ago, yeah, maybe even five years ago, and the beaches are just empty and they're gorgeous and you can see everything and do stuff and now when you go they're just packed they're just packed there needs to be somewhere new somewhere that's as good as hilton head but not as packed because it's a little too packed for me Um, well it's it's interesting damon though because we're you know we're gonna be up in jersey for my sister's wedding actually we're gonna be in jersey a lot next year uh, we have a lot of stuff going Jersey up. beaches stink, man. Well, I don't know who thinks that they're good. They're not good. There's, no, there's a couple not. There's a couple good ones. But we were looking at renting a house on the Jersey Shore. And dude, where? it is crazy expensive. Crazy. But where in the Jersey Shore? We well, were looking up at a near like places. Asbury Park because ugh, that's ugh, where we're going to be. Black. <laughs> no, Asbury's way better, Damon. They, they completely no, actually the is. Jersey Shore is no good. No, I'm well, from there and it's not good. Well, we were actually looking not we weren't going to rent a house. LBI, sure. maybe. We were going to do maybe. LBI. So that's yeah. actually we were looking at maybe. LBI, Damon. So yeah. Okay, so th- yeah. th- that would be like the best of the worst for me. Yeah. So we were going to do we were looking at LBI and then we were going to uh travel to my sister's wedding, you know, from LBI to there. It's not it's not a short drive, but it's not a long drive. You yeah. know, not, not there's really not much that is a long drive in Jersey, but it's it's not too far away, but dude, the prices are crazy and everything was booked up like months ago for next Absolutely. year. It's Absolutely. Nuts. And and I yeah. think that, you know, I'm not a beach person either, but because Hilton Head, again, like I've been to the Outer Banks a few times and just, I don't like it. It's too hot there. There's no shade. That's the, the, the difference with Hilton Head and, you know, the way that they have it set up where, you know, there can't be crazy storefronts, this color, like, you know, it's, it's all kind of this muted, you know, sort of theming that goes on across the whole island, but there's a lot of trees. Yeah, it's a, lot of a, trees a strange Hilton. place to have a beach. It's like a beach, a forest, and a marsh. Like it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it, it is, and that's why I, I, you know, can kind of dig it better. And there's just a lot of good food there. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm it just got too touristy for you. Yeah, too touristy for sure. Yeah. So I think that if you you know again to sit on the beach, and even during the non touristy times, like we used to go in august and it wasn't so bad and and now it's bad in august too i think we've been down there not even in the summer and i was surprised at like how many people were around so i don't know i mean it's still the best of the worst but i don't like the beach either and vero beach was terrible and the jersey shore is not good the only thing is i have a few things on my agenda like i'd like to see jekyll island I've heard good things, oh, yeah. maybe. I've heard that's good. I've heard that's amazing there. So I would consider something like that. Just kind of check it out, but we'll see. 
All right. Next question. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. It's from <laughs> I just B. Like Meyer oh via Discord. All right. With the pricing of Genie Plus inching up, made me ponder. Do you feel like Disney fans would be happier with a per attraction purchase? I feel like we already have that. Um, let's assume the base price and the standby line weights and f- fast time. Wait, 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 wait. Let, uh, let's assume they base the price on standby line wait time and fast lane wait times. How could you do that? The price could be $2 and up. It have to be way more than $2 on a base. Uh, okay. So, yeah. well, first of all, yeah. we already have that, right? Yeah, we like, do. Yeah. We already have a per attraction purchase, right? Just because it's not listed Perfect. out for every single attraction, it's still in theory, a per attraction purchase, right? You get genie plus you have X number of attractions. If they're not on genie plus, then it's per attraction, but those X number of attractions, I still feel like are per attraction anyway. I don't know. I, that's the way I do it in a, in a kind of a sliding scale based on line wait times. What would that even, it just, I don't know how that works. So there's a lot of people online. So the price goes up, but there's already a lot of people online. So how do you get there any yeah. faster? Like, yeah, because if the price goes higher, then I'm going to expect to have a shorter line, right? <laughs> like, you, you would only could do that if you had a standby a fast lane and then a super fast lane, a like super fast lane, and that's where you'd have to price it. And could there be a super fast lane that's genie based- plus plus genie. genie plus plus? Yeah, I like genie plus plus. So if you had genie plus plus, then you could do this third line where you could pay X amount of dollars depending on how many people were on genie plus, and then just stand by, and then you could genie plus plus. Yeah, I, I, I see how that's possible. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that would ever happen because I don't think they have the lines for it, but I don't think you could do it with the current system. No, I think it'd be tough to do. Yeah. I mean, they, they can obviously like surge price based on like, you know, cause they, they do it with the individual tractions, but it's like, but the surge pricing, I don't feel like, I think it's, I feel like it's based more on day and what they perceive as reservations sure. and overall rather than a up to the minute. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like a yeah, sliding yeah, yeah. scale, like that, yeah. that would be tough. Yeah, no, it it would be. I think it would be a. It, yeah, I don't think per attraction would be good either. Because I, you know, it's interesting. I've seen several people now, and including you know, we've had this conversation in the Discord talking about doing like the universal thing and paying a hundred dollars a person. And I'm just like, people the are universal, complaining about fifteen dollars. Can you listen, imagine a hundred? The universal <laughs> system is totally different. It's totally different. It's yeah. totally different. Not only that, you know, not every ride is on that system. So let's be upfront about that. And number two, when you're giving it away for free for high-end hotels it changes the entire discussion you just sure. can't yeah. have that discussion making comparison because i can stay at port royal or is it what is that was called royal pacific whatever that one is yeah called, yeah right I know what you're about, and, yeah. and i can get it for free and it just it's not the same it's not the same like because there's this whole math that has to go into how much does a room cost it's like right so the people that do the disney cruises and they want to go to what is that atlantis and they just go oh well i'll just rent a room at the hotel, so we have some place to change, and then it's cheaper anyway than doing it a per day basis. So I, I don't know if that's a discussion you can necessarily have about Universal, but I mean, I'd be on board with Genie Plus Plus if they create all new lines for it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the other thing too I, that people forget with Universal too, it's like how many days do you go to Universal? Right? Is it like two or three at the most? Man, and I'm so, going to tell you though, with <laughs> once they open this new park, it's going to be different. Oh yeah, well yeah, but I mean, it's I'm just saying like your average trip to Disney is like so, seven days, right? And your average trip yeah. to Universal is a couple, right? So it's, it's sure definitely you can different handle right now for sure. Yeah, so like you can handle maybe a hundred dollars per person per day for two days, right? But like if you had to do it for seven days, no. <laughs> But I, I think I think they have it right. I think yeah. that Universal has done it right because this is what I always talk about, right? If you don't make it expensive enough, it just becomes the standard. Sure, yeah. So when you have it priced that high, it accomplishes what it needs to accomplish. Yeah. You really don't want to wait? Pay a fair chunk of money and you don't have to. And they're re- I'll tell you, every time that I've, I've, I've only used it because I stay at the Royal Pacific, right? That's the only reason I even get those things. But I'm walking on everything. Like, yeah, of you know, course, we're yeah. walking on everything, excluding Harry Potter, some of the Harry Potter stuff. But even that now is on and some of it's not. But you're walking on everything. Like, we walked on The Simpsons when they had a huge line and we just literally walked right on. And it's, you know, it, it's a different experience altogether. Of course. Yeah. I mean, but I think it's designed that way, right? Like, and I exactly, I, I think it would also be difficult for Disney to do it at their scale. I just, and I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Universal changes it when they have more parks too. Um, 
But uh, you know, it's just I, I think they'll just though I think the rides that you'll see it on will still be limited, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's what it will be. Um I don't necessarily know if they change it because what they what they did do is it used to be at every hotel, right? And I now think there's different levels. Too. Yeah, now I think there's different levels. Well, there's three levels of hotels, if I remember. And again, I could be wrong here. I haven't been to Universal in a bit. But I think that there's three levels of hotels. And I think that, you know, the bottom one has nothing or early admission only, right? And then the second one has some sort of passy thing. And then the top ones have the same pass that was in the past. But I only stay at the at Royal Pacific. So for me, it's always been the same. Yeah, I gotcha. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, it's just it's. I don't think that they're apples to apples comparison. That you can I mean, I would love that though. So if you're telling me that Genie Plus was a hundred bucks a person per day, I'd be cool with that, right? Because that's going to mean way less people. But he doesn't even mean less people. Who knows, right? I don't. That, hundred dollars is like, like yeah, that's I not mean, a lot of money anymore. I hate to tell everyone, but you know, world inflation is a thing, right? Yeah, like yeah. when when your housing prices double, is a hundred bucks anything? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I but I mean, I'm telling you, I like we were going to go to the Horror Nights while we were down there. And then when we, you know, we saw we looked at what the Express Pass costs along with the ticket. We were like, yeah, we're not paying that. <laughs> like, yeah. That's that's, yeah. that's a place I'd really like to go. But I just don't know how scary it is. I want to be like scared for Halloween. Like if you're going to make me do some Halloween stuff, like let it be scary. Like I was telling people I'd rather do with those ones where you can sign a waiver. The problem is, is that my middle isn't 18 yet. So, and, and a waiver, not like that crazy place. Right. But the waiver were like, you know, if they touch you or bump into you, that's fine. Right. One of the ones we were looking at, <laughs> we saw some lady, I guess that signed the waiver and they like picked her up and took her somewhere. Like, all right, that's cool. Like <laughs> get down with that. Like that would be kind of neat, but yeah, would we, we would like to do the same. <laughs> What'd you say? You're out. on That, that? would literally freak me out. <laughs> But you love horror movies, though. I like, do. Wait, that's I, I don't understand because you guys are so much closer to Woods of Terror. Like, how have you not? Are been? we really? Where is it? It's in Greensboro, right? Or, yeah, no. you're closer yeah. than I am, aren't you? Well, it's probably halfway. Is it halfway? I mean, that is definitely something halfway. I want to go to. I yeah. want to try it at some point. It's it's probably about halfway. So okay. We used to do when we lived in Pennsylvania. There's a place called. It's in the middle of nowhere, but it's a place called Fright Farm. Yep. That we used to do. It's mm-hmm. and it's a farm most of the year, but uh, they just have this giant mansion that sits on. I think they used to live in it at some point, but there's this big yeah. mansion that they turned into a haunted house, and it's like a whole. I don't know what an hour we it took us would take us to get through. Uh, so it, like it was a little longer. Yeah, because it like starts with a hayride, and like it's mm-hmm. the it d- pretty decent hayride, like. You know, there's parts where they, you know, they do the the same stereotypical stuff where they do the chainsaws without the change, you know, and they come over and they're, ah, you know, like, you know, you don't talk about Damon. Like they do that. Go to Woods of Terror. The chains are on the chainsaws. Oh, really? That's good. Yeah. So, but, but they don't move. Yeah. Right. But the chainsaw, so they have it rigged up. So they look a little bit, you know, but well, yes, so, I know where you're talking about. I went to school in Pennsylvania. So, right. So familiar with the area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Freight Farm was awesome. We used to love Freight Farm, but um, yeah. So it, it, like I said, I mean, there's definitely some places out there that are a, a notch up. I think there's one in Florida too. That would be like what I would like to try next. I but think that we, we one all, is in like Kentucky or Tennessee or something, Damon, that you have to sign a waiver, like, and yeah, like, that's nobody just not gets even through fun. it. That's just torture. Yeah. yeah like, they, like straight up torture. torturing people. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. if that one's still around, but it is, it is, but I have no interest in that. Um, oh, this is a Jason via discord. So Hollywood studios is nearing closing time. You can either pick a showing of phantasmic or get in a short line for rise of the resistance, which <laughs> would you do? I mean, is that even like a question? Damon goes for home me? and goes to sleep. That's right. I go home and go to sleep. I would exactly what I would do. Like that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> yeah, this is- now I'd probably go on, I'd go on rise just because yeah, sure. But, yeah. Like I wouldn't be like all ecstatic about it. Like, okay, yeah, fine. Let's go rise before we go back. I, I think, I mean, I'll speak for me and then Karen, you can speak for yourself, but I think we'd probably pick Phantasmic just because, especially since it just reopened and we haven't seen yes. it in a couple of years. So, 100%. and we do love Phantasmic. So, um, and we actually just, we watched a video of it today because my daughter likes it too. So we, and I wanted to watch a video of the new one just to see what they changed and all that. So, um, but yeah, next time we go, it will definitely be a priority to do Phantasmic. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Best. So Dan wants to know, you got, is this the same Dan? Yeah, I, just, I think it's Dan H again. Yeah. Okay. So can we get a rundown of the best Halloween costumes you saw this year? I mean, Heidi Klum, obviously, but I mean, I didn't see that in person, but gosh. That I think was he crazy. means in person, right? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. If we go in person, I, I don't, I, nothing, like nothing out of the ordinary. See any good ones? No. No, not really. 
I'm trying to think. Did if we, we really saw... see any? Yeah, I mean, we saw a bunch of like the off the shelf. I mean, they were all the off the shelf ones, right? Like we, and you know, I'm getting a little tired too of the teenagers that just throw on like a jersey or like throw on like a yes. sweatshirt. And no, like... man, you can't. Right? We there's, there's always that post, Tom, that you have to read. Would you rather those kids be out doing something no. bad or getting candy? No, so but like make an effort. All, like, that's all I want. No, I just you don't want even have to. If you're a teenager, you don't even have to make an effort. Throwing a jersey on is enough effort for me. Yeah. See, my last year uh, trick or treating, and I think it was like thirteen. I think we dressed up as uh, we dressed up as Ghostbusters. I talked about this, I think, a couple weeks ago. But um, but yeah, I mean, like we tried, like we at least you know gave an effort. I don't know. Nah, I'm good. I'm good with that, man. I'm I'm good with that. If you're out, not causing mischief, like all good with that. What was the giant one we saw, Kara? We 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 saw a really large one that made oh the shark, the guy with the shark. That yes. one was pretty cool. <laughs> that was funny. I, there was also one that looked like the person was upside down. Oh yeah, that it, one was cool too. Yeah, yeah, that one was. Yeah, it was. There was they a were, decent Woody and Buzz family. Oh yeah, one. yeah, we did. See, oh yeah, actually, you know what? That might have been the best one we saw. Somebody did like a do-it-yourself Woody uh, one that was mm-hmm. actually really good. Like he, he legit looked like Woody, and it wasn't one bought off the shelf. He like you know had jeans on and found like the shirt and like you know had like a cap gun and like yeah. the whole thing. It was really podcast. Good. Everyone's on the podcast. Everyone get on the podcast. What up, podcast? What <laughs> it's a whole it's a whole family affair today. I guess they oh, they finished so they finished playing playing uh blank slate. <laughs> what did you what did your, what did your son say? Uh, he said go stream his song. <laughs> go, go stream, stream his song. song. <laughs> Wait, he's doing plugs for his song on our show. What is that about? <laughs> I guess that's what he does. <laughs> um All right, well whatever but all yeah, right. so wait wait but so i'm done because i'm going to bed like you're, it's you're 8 out. 17 okay. and i'm 100 going to bed but the question is is that we'll just talk about it right now live are we doing live, the live 200th 200. episode yeah sure why not let's do it and are we doing it that day are we doing it december 2nd yeah let's do it december 2nd. is that the is that our 200th episode is that so if we wait list thanksgiving it is because this will okay, be 97 yes. 98 yes. wait list 99 200 okay so yeah, everyone that's listening we're, we're giving you as much time as we can to plan what are, are we giving something away like we did last time for the hundredth i feel like do you want to give away shirts do you want to give away the new shirt i mean we could do that but we should give away something uh, good too <laughs> something, what do you mean, something <laughs> Not good? Digest. but yes we should give away something else as did well. you get your shirts by the way did you I get did. all of them? they were yeah. pretty cool the sweatshirt yeah. was super comfortable by the way yeah they make good stuff over there so yeah yeah, yeah. thank you to everybody that's ordered a shirt by the way yeah and if you haven't yeah. please order a shirt so we can do our next one yeah because the next, the next one, one, I think one's going to be a golden button so everyone that always next, wanted that i thought the next one was going to be uh the other thing we talked about <laughs> I don't I don't, so. Do I want to give it away or are we doing the golden button? Okay. Well, I feel like we might do the golden button, but we can't unless we sell enough shirts. So everyone go buy yeah, a shirt. We, well, I mean, the other one I think we talked about was the paper fast pass. I think we were going to do right. Oh uh, yeah. 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 But I feel like that's out there as a PDF to be honest with you. Yeah. 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 But I mean, but, so we we'll have to have us, it with our, yeah, we would have to customize yeah. it. So yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's fine, Damon. If you got to go and go to sleep, yeah, that's fine. We got you for 42 minutes. So that's exactly. <laughs> It's better than I thought, to be honest. I almost forgot about it. I'm going to be absolutely honest. And I was coming up to look at pictures of the tennis match, and I was like, wait, wait, wait a second. It's 7.30. Okay. <laughs> Podcast time. <laughs> yep. All right, David. Thanks. All right. Just me and you, Karen. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. All right. So uh, DVC News, uh, a dessert party has been added to the uh, Top of the World, which, by the way, we did not get to Top of the World, unfortunately. Um, no. We we wanted to go, but we just didn't make it happen. So it's um, – but they're doing a new uh, a new Top of the World dessert party. So um, this is scheduled for Friday nights. The event includes a buffet of dessert items, um, alcoholic beverages, reserved seating for the fireworks. Uh, it is $89 per adult and 49 per child, uh, which – I mean, I guess if since alcohol is being included, it's. I mean, that's pretty typical. Like, I don't think that's that bad. I mean, honestly, no. if you think about it, because how much is one drink, let alone you know how sure. many you might have, plus all of the different desserts, and you know, being able to be up there, I, I think that would be totally worth it. I mean, it really, guys, I guess depends on like what kind of alcohol. Are they just giving you like champagne, or like can you get like? I mean, usually it's. Yeah just like champagne or something right it's usually not like let me get mixed drinks all night right yeah but there is a full bar there typically so maybe they would be doing that yeah maybe maybe 
Uh, and so this this is called Enchantment at the Top, and it replaces the Wicked Wind Down, which is what they've been doing. Um, so on Friday nights, but Wicked Wind Down will be continue will continue on Saturday through Thursday. So Wicked Wind Down is every night. Friday nights is this this dessert party. So, and the Wicked cool. Wind Down is only fifty five dollars. It's a lot cheaper. Mm, but well, it seems like I'm the, going to assume yeah. that they probably have a lot more going for them then. Well, yeah, because I don't think the let's see, I don't think the Wicked Wind Down has. Oh, they have one. It, you get a cocktail. So it, this, whereas it seems like there's more involved with this one. And plus, it's a Friday night, right? So you're paying a premium for a yeah. Friday night anyway, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, this is good. I mean, by the way, you could still go up to the lounge for for free as well, right? So, like, it's not just these parties. This is just to enhance your your time spent on top of the world. So you can still go up there if you want to. Which again, we meant to, but we just, it's hard well, to, it's hard, happens. you know, yeah. <laughs> when you have a four and a half year old, that's what, what happens when they are ready to be done for the day. And then you're basically ready to be done for the day as well. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's one of the things I did not really anticipate from this last trip was like how exhausted we would be. <laughs> like, yeah. cause you know, we used to, you know, we used to run from open to close, right? Like, and we just yeah, can't easily. do that anymore. Yeah, I mean, we were get back to the hotel at like seven or eight, and we were just we were wiped, you know. Yeah. And I mean, given we were showing up to the parks really early though too, so we were we were getting there for early access, which was like seven thirty in the morning on most of the days. So we were, you know, it's not like we weren't getting up early. We were rope dropping. We just weren't going to nighttime. So yeah, and our daughter was still waking us up at like six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning too. It, most of the time, six six thirty, right? Yeah, like if we were yeah. we were lucky, <laughs> six thirty. So, all right. So, anything else about that, Karen? Before I do uh, our ad, I'm going to do our ad. No, I don't think so. Go ahead. All right, cool. So, our ad this week is for DVC Rental Store. DVC Rental Store, a world of DVC company, offers magical vacations at incredible value. Save up to 60% off retail rates at premium Disney resorts. DVC Rental Store now includes deposits as low as 25% at the time of booking and a built-in cancellation policy for every reservation. And as always, DVC Rental Store pays out the most to members looking to rent their points. Want to learn more? Go to dvcrentalstore.com or call 1-855-DVC-RENT. That's 1-855-382-7368. And be sure to let them know that Welcome Home sent you. All right. So next, uh, a new popcorn bucket. I know you love popcorn buckets. Karen is a pop- popcorn bucket <laughs> connoisseur. Uh, I am. You just, well, you would just love popcorn, right? And I think one of the things I kind of forgot about until we did it, right? Like until we we, we were back there, I just uh, completely forgot about the whole buy a popcorn bucket, the souvenir popcorn bucket, and then like refill it for like two bucks, which we did a almost lot. every day. We yeah. bought that popcorn bucket, I think, what, like the second day we were there? Yeah. And we almost every day we had it because that was such a perfect snack for our daughter. It just was easy. And of course, like Tom said, I am a connoisseur for popcorn. She I could eat it any time. I mean, we just got some kettle corn tonight and I'm so we excited did. to dive into that. Um, we went to a carnival yeah. and I, I just I went to go look at the food options and I came back with kettle corn just knowing. Like I didn't even ask her. I just went and got kettle corn because I knew. <laughs> like, Man of my heart right there. Yep. See? <laughs> you know, I treat you. I treat you well. I know. I know what you like. <laughs> <laughs> but so the new popcorn bucket, though, and I'm surprised there's not more chatter online about this because considering how many people love Mr. Toad, but the new popcorn bucket is uh, a ride vehicle from Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Also, you know, it's which is the the vehicle that Mr. Toad rode in the uh, in in the movie. So um, yeah, so this I think this is pretty cool looking. I don't know what you think, but I, I like it. No, I think it's really cool. Honestly, I kind of want to be that person that starts to to get all the different popcorn buckets. Um, I know you would hate that, but I think well, that just because we don't have any place to put them, that's all. <laughs> we really don't, but maybe someday. Um, but I think it's really cool. Um, I, just for the you know the sake of feeling young again and you know looking back in time. So that's going to be only at Disney World, or is it going to be? Um, I, I think both? it's just Disney World, from what I see here. Um, it's worth noting, by the way, that this is, uh, you, you have to do this via mobile order. So I think Disney kind of learned their lesson from the figment popcorn buckets and, and made it a little bit easier to do where you just, you do mobile order and you go in and you pick it up. It's also only available at, um, where is it? Oh gosh. I just saw this. Oh, at big top, uh, souvenirs, I, I believe. So, 
Um, yeah, it says Pete's Silly Sideshow. Oh, yeah, though it's on the side of Big Top. Yeah, so it's it's Pete. Yeah, so that's where you pick them up. You do the uh, the order on your phone, and then you uh, you go and pick it up there. Although I'm looking at this, and I'm trying to figure out where the popcorn even goes. Like, where do you eat the popcorn out of? <laughs> It's a very good question. Although I will say a lot of these popcorn buckets have done a really great job of kind of hiding. Like the yeah, one that true. we saw that was really fascinating to me was um, the Mickey Mouse with like the the mummy look. That was really cool. Oh, that um, one's cool. Yeah. And I, I didn't even truly recognize where it was actually going to be able to get the popcorn out of in that one. I mean, probably he's like head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I mean, looking that at, sounds, right? Yeah. Looking at this more, I wonder if that front part opens. Like the front the front of uh, the car yeah yeah like the hood uh-huh i mean how how else are you gonna eat popcorn out of this right exactly i don't know no wait it can't be the hood though because look at the sh- the way the strap is on it the strap is on the back right so you wouldn't want to have the door be on the bottom it's got to be on the back of it right yeah what if those wheels actually spin <laughs> oh man and but i just surprised. missed that yeah, I know. We did just miss that. Although Trevor didn't. Uh, so I think Trevor is uh, is endeavoring to get one of these. Uh, and I believe he's... Uh, I don't know when he's going to be in Magic Kingdom. He went through the whole his whole trip uh, a couple weeks ago, and I, I don't remember all, all the details already. But Well, maybe uh, we can message him if he can get another one, because you know, I'm still sour that I couldn't get a Figment one. So Oh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't get a Figment one. We did get a Skyliner one, though. Yes, so we got that, that one is really cool. And we have an Alien one, right? Yep. So we've got that one. And then Actually, we just got the basic one for Magic Kingdom this last time, right? That's true. We did. Yeah, we did. But we have probably, what, like five popcorn buckets maybe floating around somewhere? Uh, kind of looking in the pantry right now. Maybe like three or four. Yeah. At least. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so we don't we don't have that many, but whenever we're there and there's a special one that we, we always get it. So, Well, it's, uh, it's so worth the price, though, especially if you're going to be at the parks, if you're going to use it as a popcorn bucket. You know, if you're just somebody that wants to keep it as a souvenir, that's one thing. But, you know, if you're going to refill it, it's totally worth it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And this one just looks really cool. It's very detailed. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's I feel really like our cool. daughter would use this as a toy. Like if those wheels oh, actually move. Yeah, if those wheels actually move, she would absolutely use this as a toy. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they act. They look like they move. I can't really tell, though. So nah, it's hard to see. Yeah, but they look, I mean, they look like they, you could probably roll it around like a car. I would think, I don't know. He just but. looks so cute though. Sitting there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He looks very cute. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, anything else about that one? No. Okay. So Disney plus subscribers. I, I just thought this was interesting more than anything. So Disney's giving Disney plus subscribers uh, access, early access to special merchandise, Ooh. which I think is kind of interesting. Um, you know, it's, and it's, they're calling it a, a limited test experience. So they're, and I just think it's interesting that Disney is, is trying to give Disney plus subscribers more. Like they did that cruise thing that they, uh, they're offering. They also, you know, have, done like uh discounts on i think they're doing discounts on uh, hotel rooms and now they're doing this thing with with shop disney where their uh subscribers will receive early access to select merchandise from star wars marvel studio dr strange and the multiverse of Mag- uh, madness black panther uh and this is through november 7th so actually if you're listening to this right now uh this is and you're listening on the day that it came out the last day for this is right now so Go and do it. <laughs> Maybe we should look into that. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at this stuff and there's nothing that's really like popping out to me, but I do see that there's some Frozen 2 stuff. And yeah. You know I, how our daughter loves Frozen. That's true. She does love Frozen, except for watching the movie because she doesn't like movies. So she loves all, <laughs> she loves the songs, though. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And, and the, the, you know, action figures and, and all that other stuff. But I just find it very interesting that they're Disney's kind of like giving Disney plus, I mean, considering how little Disney plus costs, you know, yeah, like to get extra benefits for the, you know, the, the low subscri- subscription fee. I mean, I, I just, it's, that is it's pretty kind of cool. cool. Yeah. But none of this stuff really appeals to me. And I'm also, you, Karen can tell you, I'm not the type of person that's like, I need to buy this thing. The second it comes out, like I'll wait for no. stuff. Like if, if, it's one thing if this stuff was going to be exclusive and like they were never going to offer it again, but it seems like you just get early access to it. And then after November 7th, it'll just be available for people to buy. It's not so like limited be- edition. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It just, you know, you can just go and get it afterwards. 
I don't know. Well, and this is bad because now I'm going down a rabbit hole because I see some really cute stuff just in general on the Shop Disney app, especially for turning red. Oh, yeah. They have some really – yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Not you good can, for our wallet. If you can uh, – I mean, if you can get something – I what did we see when we were down there it was in uh, Creation Shop. They had like a lot of turning red stuff. And yes. so our, our daughter has not watched Turning Red. We have, though, and we really enjoyed it. But um, my daughter loves the um, – the band, the fake boy band that's in it. Like we've watched, <laughs> yes. we've watched, we've watched that video on YouTube like a million times of, of the boy band. What's that? What's the name of the boy band? I'm forgetting now. Oh my gosh. Uh, Four town. Yeah. Yeah. Four town. Yeah. So, but they had like, <laughs> they had a shirt at, at creation shop that was, uh, it was like a four town, like shirt, uh, like that you would buy at their concert that had like, I see it right here. Back. Yeah. It's literally right here. One of the first ones on shop Disney. <laughs> it's at which I just love the fact that they made it like, seem like they're a real band and that you went to their concert and bought the shirt. The over, hey, they had shirt good music. <laughs> well, we, I mean, we've only heard what two of their songs. So <laughs> that's still worth it. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. No, it's definitely <laughs> cool. It, it's just, you know, I, I don't see anything here like the like I said, I just wait. I mean, like if it's stuff that was limited edition, that's one thing, but yeah. It's more just like, hey, buy this stuff early and then it'll be available to everybody in, you know, in a day. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's continue. Uh and we're gonna the rest of the show is gonna be about food. So if you hate food, then uh yes. you hate when we talk about food, then get, then you can uh tune out now if you want to. But um, we like talking about food. So mm-hmm. food is part of the vacation for us. So, but the first thing I have on here is the gingerbread uh, houses are coming back, right? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So the, uh, we've got a, a bunch actually here. So this year marks the return of the contemporary. Also Jumbo house new, which is a new addition, which, you know, is Ooh. our home. One, uh, one of our home resorts is Jumbo house. Um, and you know, we, and Kidani, we technically own one at each, but it, you know, nothing that matters, but um so <laughs> this is actually really funny how they wrote this new additions to the jumbo house uh to the jumbo house lobby display at animal kingdom which may or may not be life-size baby zebras as well as the <laughs> classic and grand displays at the california uh grand californian and uh disney's grand uh floridian resort so i mean i think everyone knows the grand floridian one that's like the you know that's like yeah. the one i mean d- we got to see that in person once i think we did when we when we took your mom. I think it was uh, for her birthday, wasn't it? Yes, for her. We got to see that sixtieth birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mom, if you're hearing that. Oh gosh, I uh, probably shouldn't <laughs> throw her age out there. Yikes! Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, I My mom say is, those- is really for- she's forty. Everyone, she's not. <laughs> that would make things weird. Actually, <laughs> that would make things really weird. I will say, I'm looking at the Grand Flor- uh, the Grand California one. Oh my gosh. Our daughter would lose her mind. It has Chip and Dale. And oh, yeah, it is yeah. so stinking cute. Oh, and the Mickey Snowman in the front there? Yes. Yeah. That's adorable. Yeah, our daughter loves Chip and Dale. Uh, and also is listed on here, too, is the uh, the Haunted Mansion uh, gingerbread house as well. That's, you know, of course, at Disneyland uh, for the mm-hmm. uh, Nightmare Before Christmas uh, overlay. And that looks incredibly cool, too. Um but you know, I I think I love that these are back. Like, cause I I mean, not that they they did a couple over the past couple of years, but I, I I'm glad that they're bringing them back to a lot of the different resorts. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and then speaking of, so I I love you know reading about the stuff like the uh, ginger the Grand California one is seven feet tall, twelve feet wide, and uh, six hundred pounds of gingerbread, six hundred pounds of powdered sugar, two hundred fifty pounds of fondant, and one pound of pixie dust. I don't know what that is. <laughs> 25 hidden Mickeys, which, by the way, one of the things I did not talk about on the show was our daughter is like a hidden Mickey savant. Like, how many times? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) She, we were standing in line for stuff, and she goes, Daddy, look, a Mickey. And then she points it out, and I'm like, I swear I've been on this ride a 100 times, and I've never seen that Mickey there. Like, how in the world? She, right i mean she was pointing yes. out stuff like we never ever saw before and they were like legit hidden mickeys 
the me- the um the dance party one of the first things you know at hollywood studios that they did was counting the hidden mickey she got them all yeah she like, did she's yeah. no joke she knew all of them <laughs> at that book i bought you at one point about all the hidden mickeys i guarantee she could probably find them all oh i mean gosh she was she was amazing at it i was i was shocked at this i mean it was I, so maybe cool. it's just her love for mickey in general but i i don't mm-hmm. know so um so i'll also mention here too we talked about um so we we've got some food here too. We've got uh, Mickey gingerbread, uh, uh, the, and these these are, by the way, these are things that are uh, being sold uh, at the at a holiday cart there. So the um, what's uh, oh snow globe pins featuring Chip and Dale, but they have a Mickey gingerbread, a snowman cookie, a Christmas cookie. Look, they got a Hanukkah cookie, a holiday yeah, no, cookie box, assorted assorted macar- macarons, and uh, what is a sweet potato loaf? A Kwanzaa sweet potato loaf. That's interesting. A New I've Year's never cookie. Never even heard of that. I I have not either. Um, what are what are these things that are? These are like light up things that are the bottom two boxes here. Um, I don't oh. know if you're looking the Mickey. I don't know what they are though. <laughs> They're not listed what they are. No, uh, that's huh. interesting. Oh wait, no, there the- it is. Wait, it's a gingerbread Mickey ear hat bowl and a gingerbread bottle topper. Okay, Ooh. I think that's what those are, right? I cool. think that's I I think that's what they are. I. Yeah, it makes sense. I guess they, I'm sure they like light up and stuff, right? Oh my gosh, look at that gingerbread martini. I don't know if anybody likes to drink, but dang, that looks amazing. <laughs> gingerbread so, martini? That sounds yeah, gross I to mean, me. That sounds gross to me. I don't know. No, look, it has rum chata in it. Come on. Okay, I know you like that. That sounds chata, super yeah. good. <laughs> um, then we've got, so beginning November 9th, which is coming up here um, at Disney World. This is, you know, we're talking Disney World now. At Grand Floridian, um, they are the gingerbread house. I th- it looks like will be completed by then. Um, and so 25 hidden Mickeys there. There's also an 85 pound chocolate Santa. 85 wow. pounds. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. I mean, and the, listen, the, the, the gingerbread house there is amazing every year. Um, if you, if you're there around the holidays, you should go see it because it is fantastic. Um, but the picture of it even in here is just, is just amazing. Uh, but they're also doing a uh, they're doing. Yeah. So they always will sell stuff uh, inside the gingerbread house. So they have uh, fresh baked homemade items such as gingerbread Mickey's and shingles. Uh, they have a bread. They have a brownie Christmas tree. They have a chocolate peppermint bark, which I love a bark. I mean, mm-hmm. bark is always good. House made gingerbread ornaments and gingerbread houses. Uh, and then they have ooh, a gingerbread latte whoopie pie. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yes it does yeah. hot cocoa bombs yes yeah it does. what exactly a hot cocoa bomb is that just like a thing you drop in your hot cocoa that makes it that's better? my guess i okay yeah i mean that's Maybe i mean that richer. sounds great yeah someone tell me yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> and then animal kingdom lodge uh which will have the life-size baby gingerbread giraffe and a baby zebra um and this was you know this tradition started last year so yeah i, I kind of forgot about that but but starting December 6th, you can purchase a giraffe cookie, which looks also very cool. Mm-hmm. So it's like a giraffe standing in front of a uh, uh, a big Christmas tree, which looks very cool. It looks yummy. Yeah. And the Beach Club, a classic has returned, which is the uh, the carousel, the gingerbread carousel, uh, which is very cool. I Beach Club is the one resort we have not... Well, one of the resorts we haven't stayed at. This one... Uh, yeah, that one in uh, Riviera. But um, yeah, I, I mean... What an that's a very awesome display that really fits in with that whole kind of area, right? Absolutely. All right. Do you see any food down here that you're liking? I don't know. I'm just looking through these here. Um, the majority of them are ones that I feel like are pretty simple. I already told you about my my drink option. Whatever that gingerbread frost cocktail is, that looks really delicious too, and it has a little gingerbread man on top of it. Okay. All right. Gingerbread frost cocktail. Where, how far down in this article are you? Oh, sorry. Might have gone a little bit further. <laughs> no, down. you're allowed to go wherever you want. Okay. Oh, I'm you, sorry. You, this is at Boardwalk Inn. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and then contemporary. Wait, we have Boardwalk. Yes. We're talking about Boardwalk. And uh, Boardwalk is going to have their, uh, the gingerbread creation is a miniature version of uh, of the Boardwalk, right? Which is, That's is so awesome. That's cute. Yeah, which is very cool. We love the boardwalk, um, you know. And then, of course, they have sugar cookies galore. <laughs> Those cookies look so good. The ones that are Mickey Minnie up at the top. Mm. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I love the fact that they make like a miniature version of the of the boardwalk. It's very cool. Carnival bark. What is carnival bark? 
That I don't know. Um, I, I will say I think it's really cool that Disney always has some sort of gluten free or plant based. Um, oh, yeah. So they do have a gluten friendly and plant based gingerbread Mickey cookie, which is I think is really, really cool. Well, and even though you're a carnivore, you actually like the meatless stuff too. You you like trying. I do. Thanks to, you know, um, my sister-in-law and future brother-in-law, like they have really opened my eyes to some of the meatless options. I, I will say it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if the carnival bark is this picture with just a bunch of like stuff thrown on top of a uh, chocolate. <laughs> mm, probably. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what it is, but. Then we have uh, we do have a the contemporary displays back. Um, so this you know they have the Cinder- Cinderella gingerbread castle, uh, which is is very cool. It, you know looks looks very uh, it's in the the Mary Blair style. So I, I, you know obviously which fits in with the contemporary. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's it's going to f- feature eleven hidden five legged goats. Uh, for those oh. that don't know that reference. There's a five legged goat on the uh, the the uh, the mural that's in the lobby of the contemporary. Um, so that's that's why they're doing that, which is a really cool reference. <laughs> How have I never seen that or known about that? Oh, it's yeah, it's, it's like a it's it's a weird thing uh, about the. There's one of the goats has five legs in the in the contemporary mural that's in the lobby. Yeah, you just got to look for it. Oh man, I wish we would have. <laughs> you didn't know about that. No, I had no idea. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I, they're actually even doing a sugar cookie. They're really leaning into that, so they're doing a sugar cookie with that too. Cool. Which is pretty cool. More hot cocoa bombs. Frozen drinks with optional alcohol floaters. There you go. That's right. Up what? A rum oh floater? Peppermint schnapps. Fireball Ugh. floater. <laughs> oh, man. My mom would be all about that. Yeah, she would be all about that. That's why we're laughing <laughs> with this. So. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's some really cool stuff. And then over at the American adventure too, they're doing a display with, um, uh, what is this? Yeah. They're doing the classic monument. So they're doing like Lincoln yeah. Memorial, yeah. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. There it is. Um, yes. Yeah. I couldn't find, I couldn't find where it, it was written down. So yeah, <laughs> this is very cool. No, I, I, I love that they're doing this too. I, I don't think I've seen this before there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many things to see. I mean, Halloween is like really just magic kingdom is decorated, but like for Christmas and, and, you know, the other holidays uh, around Christmas time, like it's, they really do a lot at the parks. They do. All it's the so beautiful. Yeah. I definitely want to take our daughter sometime in the ne- near future for that. Cause she's all about the holidays already. Um, I can't even imagine her seeing that face and seeing all of, you know, the Christmas trees and Santa and just all of the decorations. Cause she was loving just the pumpkins. So I oh, can't yeah. imagine what she's going to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we, it's funny. Cause we, I said something to you, I think a couple of days ago, I was like, Oh, maybe we should do a Christmas trip next year. And you're like, mm-hmm. But when <laughs> the, the last time we did the Christmas trip, it was um, it was rough. It was it. We were there. I think we left the day before Christmas Eve day. Yeah, we left the twenty third. Yeah, that day was bad. That was the busiest I've ever seen it, and it was. I mean, we couldn't walk. We like literally no. were like sandwiched. I mean, it wasn't great the days before that either. But uh, some of it wasn't that bad. Like in the beginning, I don't think it was horrible. It wasn't nearly as bad as when we went to like food and wine that last time that oh gosh, not yeah. this past trip. But I, I will say this, though, it definitely was not nearly as crowded as I thought. But the closer you got to Christmas, the worse. And I actually just found out from my friend who just moved. I didn't even tell you this yet. Um, she has somebody she live. She is currently living in Daytona. And she has a friend who works for Disney and just asked her to be a part of the uh, the holiday uh recordings oh wow so she gets the, to go the to the park. or no no just go the, oh you're talking like about the, rec- the, the the bands that they're gonna do and yes all? Oh, i'm that's so cool. jealous she that's texted cool. me the other day and i was like so is there any way i can come to daytona and then go with she, you did she say what <laughs> bands because i don't think they've actually announced the bands and groups no yet. no her friends just asked her to go with her and be able to, be those to actually that be are, there so yep. wait you're saying that the people that are in those are plants and not actual guests <laughs> uh, maybe some of them because <laughs> <laughs> we do watch that every i mean we that is we uh, something we watch every year it's we a also tradition watch, yeah it's a tradition we also watch the thanksgiving parade uh you know that they, they usually do the thanksgiving stuff and you know so we we always watch the holiday stuff so yeah 
But uh, yeah, so this this all looks very cool. But so I also the next thing we have though too is uh, an actual food guide to Mickey's uh, very merry Christmas party. So these are food items from the the, the Christmas party uh, specific to that that are a little bit different. And so some of the stuff you have here, first of all, is the uh, we have uh, uh, well, where am I at? Sugar plum shake. I'm out on that. A, a, a spiced sugar plum soft serve topped with cherry syrup, whipped cream, and sprinkles. Um, excuse me. I'm in. Yeah, I know you. That do sounds that. amazing. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm curious about for your listeners, whoever's gone to Mickey's Not So Scary and then um, the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas, because this is not a first year doing no, no, Very Merry no. Christmas party, right? No. I'm curious as to what people think of about which one to do. Cause let's be real. You know, I want to do one of these with our daughter at some point. Um, but they're also very pricey. And so is this something maybe we would want to do with her first? Because, you know, you have Santa, you have Christmas, all that. I would be curious as to see what people would think about, you know, the differences between the two. Well, yeah, that's, that's actually a good, interesting one because, you know, you for the, the the Halloween party, you have all the candy and the trick or treating piece, which she loves trick or treating. But this yeah. this one's a little different, right? This one's more, like you said, it's more geared towards uh, not obviously not scary things, and and it's all about Christmas with the parade and all that. And she does. We have watched the parade before too on YouTube, and she does love the parade. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's an interesting question, but I it, yeah. So if you have opinions on this, let us know because I'd be interested yeah. in too. So we also have the Lock, Shock, and Barrel Sunday, which is an interesting name for something, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a festive vanilla cake, vanilla ice cream, strawberry topping, whipped cream, and Christmas sprinkles. But it looks like it's in a bathtub. I mean, yeah. I mean, I just rem- <laughs> remember what Lock, Shock, and Barrel is a reference to. Um, but yeah, no, it is in a bathtub. It's it's the it's yeah, it's in the bathtub. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks interesting. I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem like anything special, right? It's just a cake no. that they threw in there and then threw some. I mean, it's a regular Sunday, right? Yeah. Okay, the holiday dinner dog, an all beef hot dog with cranberry mustard. Uh, I'm already just out. Oh my god, the, the, I'm actually out of this. This sounds gross. <laughs> cranberry mustard, savory stuffing funnel cake. What? Wait, what? It's just they made. Wait, can I? what Ew. but there's cheese curds on it wait there's cheese curds though <laughs> so can we that's... just get the cheese curds <laughs> yeah i mean maybe but this is a by the way i should mention that this is park hours and the party uh the first two that we mentioned actually the sugar plum shake is exclusive to the party the uh sunday is not exclusive to the party so okay. should mention that um and yeah so now that sounds disgusting mm-hmm. um i i and the, by the way, that's at Casey's. If you you know, if you didn't realize where that was, but um, I'm assuming it's at Casey's. Yeah. And yeah. then they also have a Christmas tree cake, which is red velvet brownie cheesecake with eggnog buttercream and spice caramel topping, uh, topped with mini sugar Christmas lights. Yes, please. Okay. And by the way, this is also Christmas party only. Um, I'm out on that because I don't like eggnog. So. I wonder how much of it, though, you could really taste. I bet you you'd be fine with it. I mean, I definitely try this. This is not something I would like. I wouldn't try the dinner, the holiday dinner dog. That just sounds gross. And I hate mustard. No. This is Karen knows. I'm like literally don't even want to touch yellow mustard. I'm so grossed out by <laughs> mustard. She loves mustard. I can't stand mustard. <laughs> so I'll have a honey mustard. But like that, that artificial yellow mustard. I I I don't know. It just grosses me. Give me a pret a soft pretzel with mustard any day, and I'm happy. Yeah, I, yeah no, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> so let's move over to the Friars Nook, where we have curry brat tots. Which Wait, is you t- missed one. What did you I miss? The polar oh, bear claw. You're right. That's and that something my mom would love. Oh, I would love this too. This is a cool ship, and this is the uh, chocolate hazelnut pastry with white and dark chocolate. That looks amazing. Hmm. I would, you know how much I love chocolate hazelnut, a.k.a. Nutella. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) They can't say it, though. Yeah, they're not allowed to say Nutella. I'm surprised they haven't made a deal with Nutella to be able to say Nutella. But (laughs) so the curry brat tops, which are tots topped with chopped bratwurst, curry ketchup, and apple slaw. Now, I feel like that's a thing that you would eat. Oh, 100%. Even the weirdness of the apple slaw, I feel like, would taste so good. That's sweet and salty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. By the way, Christmas party only. So, 
Um, that is a, that, that, that is an exclusive. And then we also have another Friars Nook Christmas party only, which is the Tinkerbell Cream Puff, which is a cream puff and compressed carrot cake topped with spiced cream cheese icing, spiced walnuts, and chocolate wings. I actually would eat this. It looks delicious in the picture. It looks like they took an oatmeal cream pie and shoved it into a cream puff. That's yeah. what it looks like, right? Yep. Yeah. I like oh, carrot my- cake too, actually. What? What do you the say? Oh, my God, one. too. I, I can't. Okay. The next one is at the Golden Oak Outpost, the fried pork tamales served Christmas style with red and green chili sauces and queso fresco. Yes, please. That, that, that I mean, sounds that so good. good. That oh. one is during regular park hours and the Christmas party. Then we have a chai. Ca- See, I, I drink this. I love, you know, I love chai. So chai yes, caramel freeze, salted caramel freeze with chai spiced whipped cream. That is, Ooh. that sounds awesome. You can get that uh regular hours and christmas party that mm. but that just i would i would totally totally drink that um so we also have the main street bakery a cinnamon roll which you know just the regular mini cinnamon roll and that's you know of course available at all times but then you have the mickey moose ornament treat which is <laughs> <laughs> gingerbread mousse with crispy center and a spice almond cake with a brownie crumble i you know i'm i'm in on this i like it it sounds a little too rich for me, but it does sound yummy. So this is the funny thing, right? So I love things that are rich and Karen does not. Like Karen does. So like if we ever get anything like this, it would always be shared because Karen will eat one or two bites and then yep. the rest is all me because she just can't do the richness. And I love the rich stuff. So by the way, this is also an exclusive to the Christmas party. So um, then we have Pecos Bill, which has a Texas sized sweet potato pie. Baked huh. sweet potato pie with marshmallow meringue and candied pecans. Hmm. You lo- you love sweet potato. You'd be all I don't I don't like sweet potatoes, so I'm meh. I, I do, but I still think this might be a little, a little too much? sweet for me, especially with the candy pecans. Mm. Yeah. Do you say pecans or pecans? I think it depends on the the, the moment. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I agree with that. Yeah. I want to do a poll in the group. Some if I forget to do this, this is a funny thing. So, th- by the way, shout out to Kristen for putting out the questions for Tom's wife mm-hmm. topic on the group. But because literally, like earlier that evening, Karen had said to me, "Are you going to put a post in the group to ask for questions?" And I was, I just completely forgot. He was like, "Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, I'll definitely, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do it, yeah, yeah." And then I saw Kristen's post, and I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Which Kristen found funny, by the way. That's I, oh, I sure noticed. She did. I noticed all the ladies in the group found that very funny because uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure their own husbands they go through the same thing. So anyway, so that sweet potato pie is a regular park hour and party uh, one. Now here's one that I'm definitely in on is a peppermint hot fudge brownie sundae because uh, I yeah. love sundays. Um, and peppermint ice cream, hot fudge, candy cane pieces served on a brownie. Oh. And I love we the would Plaza ha- ice cream parlor, parlor too. You know, yes, we would have to share that though. Sorry, I personally would have get the candy cane hot cocoa because that, that is just. Mm. We can make that at home. You know, we just make hot cocoa. You throw some, you know, peppermint yeah, but in there. You don't have the pixie dust special Disney flair. Uh, you know, it's not the same. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. It's not the same. Um, that's a hot chocolate with pepper peppermint ice cream. Although I don't know where we could get peppermint ice cream from. So you know, that's. that's- uh, I bet you we could find it, but it probably wouldn't be as good. As I've said many times before, Plaza Ice Cream Parlor, best smells in the parks. So, and I mean, we we made a point. I think I told everybody on the show that on our last trip, we literally, we went into Magic Kingdom, we went and got dinner, and then we went and got ice cream at Main Street. And then we were planned on doing other things, and my daughter just passed out. So we went, we went back to the room. <laughs> we literally, that's all we did, though. We went into Magic Kingdom, had, did those two things, and then left. <laughs> so... Yeah, which, you know what? That I mean, is the perk fine. of having, you know, uh, annual passes. Although she didn't, but that was, you know, that was really nice to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, I agree. Uh, and then let's see what else we got here. Funnel cake Sunday. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can take it or leave it. Oh, see, funnel cake. I smelled it tonight at the carnival, and I actually am kind of sad that I didn't get it. Yeah, well, I mean, funnel cake does have a great smell. I don't know. I just feel like this would be very messy. And I, you know, I don't like yeah. messy things. I, I don't like, I don't. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yeah. I, it's a joke in my family that I, I don't like to get my, I don't like when my hands are dirty. So like, I don't like messy <laughs> things because otherwise. And I he passed to... that on to our daughter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. It's true. I just don't, I don't like stuff on my hands. I just, it bothers me. So anyway, 
Uh, then we have a Santa Claus peppermint mousse treat, white chocolate peppermint mousse with chocolate fudge center, a chocolate Santa hat, and a Jack Skellington face. Okay, this is all. This is party only, but I this sounds amazing, and I want it. Oh, and I hate to tell you this, but you actually called it the wrong thing. It's Sandy Claus. Oh, you're right. It's Sandy Claus. I read that incorrectly. You're correct. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay, but I, I'm pretty sure there's a reason for that, right? Well, because it's Nightmare Before Christmas. That's why. Exactly. Yes. No, I know. And that was, by the way, that was the, the tub one, too, was Nightmare Before Christmas themed, which I did not realize. I've, I'm have i not a huge fan oh, of that Oh, now it makes sense. Yeah, okay, I, yeah. I totally didn't catch that. It's. I mean, I've maybe seen that movie once or twice all the way through, and I, I you know, no, I'm not seriously? a huge fan of that one. Yeah, I'm not. A, I like it. No, I knew you weren't a huge fan, but I figured you would have seen it a few more times. I actually really, I like it. Um, it's a little creepy to me though. Uh, just the the animation style. I know people would probably have an issue with me saying that, but it it does yeah. creep me out a little bit. It's one of those things where some people, I mean, a lot of people love it and a lot of people just don't care for it, right? Like it's yeah. it's one of those things where I feel like you find a lot of people on both sides of it, right? Yeah. So apple cider float, you know, mm. sounds good to me. Sunshine Tree Terrace, a once upon a time Christmas tart, which is chocolate and cranberry tart with chocolate Mickey ears. And this is new and this is available only during the party. I don't like cranberry. Yeah, I don't know if I would like that. Although I I like cranberry, but only in certain aspects. Like I think it would be a little much for me. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Uh, and then we have, and then just some other cards. There's a Christmas cookie churro. All right, that looks amazing. It does. I would definitely eat that. Marshmallow cream cookie crumbles and Christmas sprinkles. Yep. Mm-hmm. I feel like I never see churros walking around Disney World. I don't know why. Like I. You know, occasionally you see them, but it's not as much as like, I don't know. I feel like I always see these special churros and I can never find them in the park. <laughs> <You know? laughs> then we have a Christmas wreath donut, which is a red velvet donut with green buttercream and a holiday sprinkle decoration. Okay. I like a red velvet. I mean, you can't go wrong with a donut. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Both of these things, by the way, are not exclusive to the party. So you can get during the day and also... I like how it says decorations will vary, by the way, for the uh, <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, Depending upon what they still have, I guess. But still, you okay. would think it's Disney. They would have everything. They're, they're pretty consistent. The yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's it. That's that's all we had to talk about. Is there anything you wanted to bring up? Um, I don't think so. Um, I do want to thank the listeners for taking such good care of my hubs and yeah. liking this show. Um, because it does save me a little bit from hearing some Disney. Um, no, but in all seriousness, though, this has been such a great outlet for him. And I can't believe you guys are almost at episode 200 already. Like, I, I feel like yeah. you just started. It's kind of absurd to me that you guys have done that many shows already. Well, and I think in next year in April, I think it'll be, is it five years? I think it's five years in April. So wait, yeah. did you guys start right before our daughter was born? I, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Oh my gosh. That's so weird. Yeah, because right when we first started the show, I was, you know, we were, we had a newborn. So yeah. Yeah. We started that's beginning, crazy. Yeah, beginning of April. Yeah. Oh, so you guys have really gotten the feel for uh, being able to see a little one go to Disney since this is the third time. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. It's been kind of, kind of cool. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So I'll do the wrap up. Trevor usually does the wrap up. We miss Trevor. Uh, we hope he's having a good time, but um, yeah. I'll do the wrap up here. So really quickly, uh, Trevor usually takes longer on this than I, than I will, but, <laughs> but first, but also before I do that, thank you dear for showing up on the show and, and, and doing Absolutely. this with me tonight. I know you're tired. I know this is past your bedtime, but I, <laughs> <laughs> it is considering, you know, the fact that uh, our daughter will be waking me up at six o'clock in the morning, although it is daylight savings. So, um, Hopefully, I'll get a little bit extra. So she's going to wake up at five o'clock not. in the morning. So she's going to wake up at five o'clock in the morning instead of six. No, I I told her she cannot get up until she sees the sun. But who knows? We'll see. <laughs> People are going to think that you mean sunrise, and that's not. Oh what no, mean, sorry. <laughs> we we have a clock that tells her when she could get up by looking at a picture of a sun or a moon. Um, <laughs> so fingers crossed that I get some sleep. But no, I I've had a really good time. I appreciate you having me on here with you guys. I and we'll have to do it again uh, another time. I I don't know why it took me five, almost five years to get you to come on the show. Yes, but. and I think the other wives. I know Trevor's wife has been talking about wanting to go on, come on too. So we should definitely do that. That'd but you fun. two, I feel like you two 
secretly talk behind mine and Trevor's back all the time. I feel it. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say a lot, but let me, I, I will say this though. We have chatted a few times and she's so sweet. Um, I haven't unfortunately had the uh, pleasure of talking to Damon's wife, but I'm sure we would get along well as well. But uh, no, that would be fun to have like a wife show. Oh my gosh, that that's kind of that would be an interesting concept to have the three of you do a show instead of the three of us. That would I, be kind I, of funny. I like I like this idea. I like this. Oh, idea. there you go. Let's All make right. it happen. All right. <laughs> So, so listen, if you like that idea or if you have questions or you just want to say hi, reach out to us uh, at uh, welcomehomepodcast at gmail.com. That's the uh, way you can directly get to us. Of course, you can also join our group, which is Welcome Home Disney Waitlist. Uh, we have a lot of fun in the group and, uh, you know, you can really uh, ask us things in there and, and we'll, we'll answer them. But, you know, the, the, the email address is a good way to get us to, you know, send us questions, uh, you know, on the page, on, on, the, uh, on the email address, wherever you want to do it. Um, so you could find us on all the social media places, right? So welcome home podcast on Facebook. Uh, and I mentioned welcome home Disney waitlist. That's our private group, which, you know, anybody can join, but you do have to, you know, get approved to join. So, um, but we, we have a lot of fun in this group. It's drama free. Uh, n- not like, a you know, a lot of the other Disney groups that are out there that are, are filled with all kinds of drama. We don't tolerate any kind of nonsense in our group. So um, any nonsense, <laughs> any nonsense, and you get kicked right out of there. So I, don't, I actually think we've only had to ban, no joke, in the, in the years that we've had this group, I think we've only banned one person, which is kind oh, of amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And they were just being a jerk. So <laughs> like, yeah. But out of here. Yeah. Just you're gone. You're, you're, you're booted. So YouTube channel, Welcome Home Podcast, Instagram, Welcome Home Picks. Uh, our store right now is taken over with the universe of energy, haunted universe of energy shirts. So please go check those out. Like I said, it's buying those supports the next shirt, right? So like we literally use the proceeds of the shirts that you buy for this to do another special shirt. So please, you know, if you, if you're interested, listen, I also understand that it's not everybody's style. That's cool. I get it. I saw one or two people say that totally fine. We have sweatshirts though. We have tank tops. We've got regular shirts. We got all sorts of fun stuff in there. So that's store.welcomehomepodcast.com. Um, and, and that will take you right to that store. We also have a Patreon, which we appreciate when you support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash welcome home pod. Um, you can also find it in our show links as well. So that one is a great one too, because you get access to the discord server, which you can, you know, have some more intimate discussions with the, with us. We will tend to, to share a little bit more in the discord and uh, you know, we have some really interesting conversations in there uh, and it's a very small, you know, small group. So uh, please, you know, and that's, you can, I'll do our lowest level of Patreon, just the $5 level and you can get access to this discord. And if you do, some of the higher levels, you can get access to exclusive merchandise that we don't offer anywhere else. And actually, it's not even access. Just with your subscription, you get it for free. So, so yeah, so go check out our Patreon. Of course, please, if you use iTunes or you use Spotify, please leave us a review or give us a star rating. Please, five-star reviews. We really appreciate those. And, and we love the comments. We love seeing the reviews, especially if they're funny. Um, if you hate us and you want to give us a, a, a review, just... You know, just give me five stars and then, you know, you can write your bad review and say how much you hate me and or Damon or whoever. It's usually Damon. But <laughs> <laughs> poor Damon. He's not even here. So, what, what, you know, I mean, unless he's going <laughs> to randomly pop in. I mean, you know, anyway. That'd be a little weird. I know it happens sometimes. Sometimes he just pops back in at the end of the show. You just never know when it's going to happen. <laughs> so, anyway, please give us reviews. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, just about any podcast app out there. You can find us. Just search for Welcome Home. Look for the one that's Disney. Uh, just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company yet. I said yet because maybe someday. And as such, all pretty, uh, although if I ever worked for Disney, I'd have to end the podcast, wouldn't I? Uh, that but, would be really sad actually yeah i'd have to, i probably would i bet they wouldn't allow me to have a podcast right no anyway. probably not yeah right all opinions on this expressed on the show are our own so please consult a disney cast member or dvc representative for more information about anything we talked about today huge thank you to our sponsors at dvc rental store for sponsoring this episode and of course world of dvc for continuing to be our supporters uh please check them out uh, and and use their services because we appreciate when you support the people that support us and they are our biggest supporters besides you guys so uh please check them out Join us next time for more Disney Parks discussion. Of course, more DVC talk. We hope to see you all real soon. This is 
Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. When we hit a chair, how she can cuddle is no man's affair. I looked around from pole to pole, found her in a sugar bowl.